In a recent interview with Michael Shermer, Bart Ehrman suggests that the author of John wasn't aware of the virgin birth and possibly even rejected it. Here's Dr. Ehrman. Gospel of John also, there's there's something kind of like that. It's, well, it's different, but it's in the Gospel of John. Um, Jesus, uh, there's no mention of the virgin birth, the Gospel of John at all. Uh, but at one point, Jesus' enemies are upset with him about something, and they're having an argument. And they're trying to kind of dig it in. They, they use this ad hominem argument, you know, <laughs> that's irrelevant to the point, but like it's going to take a dig at him personally. And they say, um, we were not born illegitimately. Yeah. Interesting. We, we weren't born out of right, wedlock, in right. other words. And it's like, uh, what does that suggest about what they think? <laughs> and there are other rumors, you know, that Jesus was, that Jesus' mother, in fact, got pregnant by a Roman soldier or that there's some kind of thing going on. And, you know, maybe John knows about that, but doesn't know about it. So, <laughs> anyway, so there, there are other things. It's not just the absence of evidence. When someone makes a claim like this, it's always wise to read the text for ourselves. Ehrman is referring to John 8.41, which reads, And Jesus said, You are indeed doing what your father does. They, his Jewish opponents, responded, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. In his role as narrator, John doesn't attempt to correct their statement. He doesn't elaborate by alluding to the stories of the virgin birth found in Matthew and Luke. For that matter, some scholars debate whether John knew about the Synoptic Gospels at all. But the point is that nowhere in John's Gospel is the virgin birth mentioned, and Ehrman suggests that this passage counts against it. So is Ehrman correct? To understand what's going on here, we need to examine the surrounding passages. I'll be paraphrasing a bit, but I encourage you all to read John 8 for yourselves. I will especially be focusing on John 8:31 through 58. Now, after calling himself the light of the world and cryptically hinting at his departure, some of Jesus' critics are giving him some grief. Jesus then famously tells the crowds, If you obey me, you will become my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Jesus is misconstrued by his opponents who claim that they're Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves. Jesus tells them that sin makes them slaves, but that he, being the Son, is here to set people free from sin. This is yet another big claim about his self-identity. Jesus acknowledges that although they are descendants of Abraham, they certainly aren't acting like Abraham instead, they're out to kill him. Jesus then explains to them that if they were Abraham's descendants, they wouldn't be acting so evil. After that, Jesus gets a bit spicy, saying that they're doing the works of their father, but he doesn't drop the devil bomb yet. This is when they assert that God is their father and they're not illegitimate, implying Jesus was illegitimate. Jesus then pulls off the gloves and says that their father is Satan. He does this because they refuse to believe him and are trying to destroy him. Then Jesus' opponents try but fail to pull the Uno reverse card. They ask, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus continues on to say that he pre-existed Abraham and calls himself by a divine name, the I Am, referring to Yahweh's statement to Moses in Exodus 3.14. This was a bridge too far, so his enemies took up rocks to stone him. End of scene. Now let's think about this for just a second. Calling Jesus a demon-possessed Samaritan was certainly another way to call his birth illegitimate. If you remember, the Samaritans were a group of people who lived in Samaria, an area north of Jerusalem. When Assyria conquered the northern kingdom of Israel in 721 BC, some Israelites were taken captive while others were left behind. Many of those left behind intermarried with the Assyrians. The Samaritans also had their own copy of the first five books of Moses and their own worship system. Because the Israelite inhabitants of Samaria intermarried with the foreigners and adopted some of their idolatrous religious practices, the Samaritans were universally despised by the Jews, especially during Jesus' time. This hostility was especially heightened due to some relatively recent history. During the Maccabean Revolt, Josephus tells us that Samaria Samaritans disassociated themselves from any similarities to their Jewish neighbors. They even wrote to King Antiochus IV saying that they would dedicate their temple to Zeus. So yeah, the Jews weren't really happy with them, and we can see this tension when the disciples were surprised to see Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. Josephus also tells us that the Samaritans were actively hostile to the Jews. In AD 52, the Samaritans killed some Jewish pilgrims from Galilee. In the Jewish prophets, idolatry was repeatedly referred to as spiritual fornication and adultery. Because in the context in the context of John, Jesus was making some very bold claims about his self-identity. His enemies were calling him demon-possessed and a crazy Samaritan idolater. To them, Jesus is mixing Jewish ideas with pagan ones, just as the Samaritans do. Their worship, on the other hand, was of the pure kind. They were the true sons of Abraham and of the offspring of God. So what we have here is that Dr. Ehrman is just simply ignoring the context of the passage. Having said that, even if the intent of John 8.41 is to imply Jesus' illegitimate conception, this would still be consistent with the accounts of Jesus' infancy which mentions that the pregnancy was premarital. John himself wasn't saying that Jesus was illegitimate. Jesus' opponents were. John is simply reporting what they said. And under the circumstances, it's hardly surprising that Jesus' enemies would claim that he's illegitimate. John's silence about the virgin birth is a poor argument that he is unfamiliar with the virgin 
birth. I've discussed in the past why the argument from silence is so faulty, and you can see that in an earlier video that I will link in the description. Despite there being a reasonable interpretation of John 8.41 supporting the traditional Christian view of the infancy narratives, Ehrman bafflingly acts as if his interpretation proves that you false. This objection drawn from John's gospel against the virgin birth is exceptionally flimsy. Ehrman's credibility is severely undermined by exaggerating so-called discrepancies by taking passages out of context, reading them superficially, and making weak arguments from silence. Just because someone has a PhD or has sold a lot of books doesn't mean that you should trust everything that they have to say. Read the text for yourselves and do a little homework. Merry Christmas.